Imagine you move to a lake and start fishing to feed your family. You soon realize that you can sell the fish for a nice profit at the local market, so you fish even more. A neighbor sees your extra income and thinks, I could do that too. Word spreads, more and more boats appear on the water. But the fish population can't keep up. Eventually, what was once a plentiful resource disappears, and you no longer have the ability to feed your family. In his 1968 essay, Garrett Hardin called this pattern the tragedy of the commons, the depletion of a shared and finite resource, like a population of fish. Each individual, acting to maximize their own gain, utilizes the resource as much as possible without considering the overall impact. As a result, the commons is degraded and isn't available for anyone. This pattern of overuse is a major driver of many environmental problems like deforestation, water depletion, and overgrazing. But the tragedy of the commons also explains pollution. Let's circle back to the lake. To maintain a lush lawn, each homeowner regularly applies fertilizer. But the excess nutrients wash into the lake. The amount of fertilizer used by each individual doesn't seem like much, especially when the cost of not fertilizing is having the ugliest lawn in the neighborhood. But the cumulative nutrient pollution from everyone fertilizing their lawns results in algae blooms, damaging the lake's ecosystem so that people can no longer fish, swim, or kayak. Air pollution, water pollution, and even climate change all result from putting waste into the commons. This benefits the individual, but everyone bears the costs. Once you can see the tragedy of the commons, it's everywhere, and it's not just environmental issues. Have you ever noticed how gross a communal kitchen can get? The it belongs to everybody, so it belongs to nobody mentality takes over. People use shared supplies and don't clean up after themselves. What about traffic? Each person drives for their own convenience, leading to traffic jams, which increases commute times for everyone. At the heart of the tragedy of the commons is the tension between individual freedoms and the common good. As Garrett Hardin said, each man is locked into a system that compels him to increase his herd without limit in a world that is limited. Ruin is the destination toward which all men rush, each pursuing his own best interest in a society that believes in the freedom of the commons. Freedom in a commons brings ruin to all. Addressing the tragedy of the commons requires rules and regulations that balance individual liberties with collective responsibility. Some might worry that these infringe on individual freedoms, but Hardin argued that ensuring the resource is available long-term leads to a greater freedom overall. In short, if none of us can eat, None of us are free.